All right, so last week I uploaded this video where I tested loss the scaling to see how much frames per second I could actually get. And uh, we ended at around 800 frames per second of Ratchet and Clank, right? But a lot of people in the comments were actually pretty mad. <laughs> they said that I'm using it incorrectly or whatever, but that was not the point of the video. The point of the video was to see how far we could actually push it. And as I said, we got to around 800 frames per second, but then the dev also reached out to me and, uh, gave me some pointers to see what I could improve, right? So today's video is going to be about how to use lossless scaling correctly. All right, so currently we're back in Ratchet and & Clank and uh, the reason for that is because it was also one of the games I used in my previous video. So I'm going to try and go through this very quickly at just a few pointers or points that I need to talk about. So lossless scaling actually caps your base frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate. That's why in the previous video, I used the 60 hertz capture card and the base frame rate was locked to 60 frames per second. It couldn't go any higher, even though G-Sync or V-Sync were disabled, right? So second thing I want to talk about is frame generation does not decrease your input latency. It actually increases your input latency. So for that reason, there's no real benefit to going above your monitor's refresh rate when you use frame generation, right? So it's fine to see what kind of frame rates you can actually push that's exactly what I did in my previous video. It wasn't supposed to be a very technically correct video. It was just me playing around to see how, how much I could actually get out of it. And then also, so, so the, the point is to try and get a, basically your monitor's refresh rate as the final output, right? So currently we are running at 1440p on the very high preset, but the LS is set to quality on an RX 4090 and a 7800 X3D. The 4090 is currently my, the only GPU that I do have in position. I'm waiting for new GPUs. Anyway, that's beside the point. Lossless scaling works on pretty much any GPU and pretty much any game, right? Uh, it might depend on support on the DXGI uh, capture API, but uh, it'll work in most games, right? And uh, then the last point that I wanna just talk about here is that uh, currently I do have a 165 Hertz 1440p panel connected. Yes, sorry, I'm just running around, but I wanna talk about what I want to talk about here just to explain a few things. I've got a 165 Hertz panel and the when I use frame generation, I do use V-Sync and G-Sync and Reflex and V-Sync caps the frame rate to 165 frames per second due to the monitor's refresh rate but then if you enable reflex it actually caps it a little bit lower it caps it to 158 frames per second so that's exactly what we are going to be trying to do here uh, we are going to try and cap to uh, 156 frames per second final output the reason for that is 156 frames per second can be divided by two or by three and um, that way we'll get the same final output but testing x2 and x3 will get us the same final frame rate. All right, I think that basically said it all. One other thing, latency meters, latency overlay meters actually don't work with this, um, with lossless scanning at all. I tried Presentmon, I tried the NVIDIA overlay, I tried uh, AMD's, uh, what's it called, uh, LFM or something, L LMF, can't exactly remember the name, but none of that actually gives us accurate results. So the only way you can test input latency using lossless scanning is with a physical uh, click to photon type of device. All right. Uh, if I'm wrong, correct me, but uh, I couldn't get any of the overlays to work. All right. So that out of the way, let's start with the lossless scaling tests. All right. So here's my lossless scaling settings. This is just the scaling type. This is an upscaler. I leave it disabled. You can enable any of these uh, if you do or want upscaling, if a game does not support it, but we'll just use the LSS in this case. Right. And then LSFG 3.0 is the latest version. This is the one we'll be using. It is the best one of them. Then we do have modes 2x, 3x, 4x custom. I've already tested 4x and 20x, etc. So we'll only be testing 2x and 3x in this video. Resolution scale is just the resolution scale of the generated frames. If you find you are struggling to get to your base frame rate or your target base frame rate, you can reduce this. And then also these are just basically the, the same settings I used in the previous video. And then the capture API, DXGI works for me for most games. If a game does not work, you can just try and change the capture API. Yeah. Then I only have one GPU enabled and that's the RX 4090. I do have two displays enabled, but I do have multi-display mode enabled here yeah, as well. And as I said, the 
the monitor's refresh rate currently is 158 or 165 hertz and i'm aiming for 156 right so that means we would need to cap our frame rate and for that we're going to be using rtss so basically 78 frames per second base frame rate cap here would translate to 156 frames per second because we times it by two with the frame generation right so if we go back to our game you can see in the top left hand corner we've got a base frame rate of 78 and a final output of 156 now i've got msi afterburner open here i don't think that the metrics displayed in overlays are always correct because sometimes it'll show that the game is stuttering when there's no stutter or no perceivable stutter anyway and uh I think that the frame rate also sometimes does not reflect correctly but i've just got it open there in the top right hand corner just to give you an idea what the frame times are looking like although it it does it is perceived a little bit better all right so x2 getting us 156 frames per second here which is basically the same as what i would get with v-sync and uh, reflex enabled and uh, this is actually a pretty good experience it's very very smooth motion fluidity is pretty good input latency is not bad and if we have a look at the trees here again the same as in the previous video you'll notice that the artifacting is a lot less than on 10x or 20x even 4x right it is it is extremely decent this is very very good i, I actually don't see any issue using this now where, where would you use it like if a game does have dlss and dlss frame generation or fsr frame generation i'd probably advise you to use the built-in frame gen tech i'm just using this game as an example we'll get to a, a real life example soon but i think it does a very very good job here right we are we basically reduced our gpu power usage because obviously we are now rendering only 78 real frames per second so our gpu is doing a lot less work and that way you can get a little bit more of an efficient system with the same perceived motion fluidity right so there are some little artifacting here and there but the x2 mode is actually pretty good now i just need to say that the what i see on my 165 hertz panel is different to what you'll see on the 60 frames per second youtube recording because the the frame rate or that the screen refreshes so quickly that the that the artifacts are really not noticeable but on a 60 hertz display because i can i can see that the i can actually monitor my my recording in the on the right hand side monitor here and there you can you can actually see that the crosshair does disappear from time to time it's so what you'll see in the youtube video is not entirely what you will see when playing the game itself on a high refresh rate panel all right so that's x2 let's try x3 all right so now for x3 that's what i was talking about earlier to get to 156 frames per second we can take a base frame rate of 52 now personally i would not really recommend 52 frames per second for frame generation because uh, of the additional input latency that you'll notice uh, times uh, 52 frames per second is a little bit lower than i'd recommend I'd, I'd recommend 60 frames per second right all right so basically now we got a base frame rate of 52 frames per second and a final frame rate of 156 frames per second input latency is slightly higher uh, as i said i can't measure it unfortunately there is a little bit more artifacting especially in the foliage but not nearly as bad as in my previous video because remember the previous video we were trying to see how how far we could actually push the frame rate not um not to see whether it's actually usable or not and uh, it was just a fun video for me so in the in the foliage here you can see that it does disappear a little bit once again in the 60 frames per second recording on the right hand monitor here it does look worse than on the high refresh rate panel here but we can see that we we are able to maintain our 52 frames per second target and it then basically generates uh, or times it by three so it generates two additional frames for each real frame and uh, that makes it 156 frames per second definitely usable i i'm not going to mind playing like this at all input latency is slightly higher than previously but as i said uh, it'll it'll affect different people differently i'm fine with this kind of input latency other people will hate it and will not play play like this at all others it might bother slightly but uh, 
personally this is actually not horrible i'd be i'd be able to to play like this and uh, remember we do have reflex enabled in this setting so it does reduce input latency and why can't i even hit a box all right so that's going to be it for ratchet and clank i just wanted to show you the the perceived visual quality well talk about the perceived visual quality because uh, it's slightly better than the youtube video will show you it's actually very very good i do like it all right so i'm going to show you dragon's dogma 2 next just to show you a real world example all right so here we are in dragon's dogma 2 and the reason why i want to show this video it, or this game is because it lacks a cpu optimization it is actually pretty bad when it comes to cpu optimization we are running a 7800 x3d and at times it drops into the 60 in, into the low 60s right when it comes to the frame rate so currently i do have uh lsfg enabled as well i mean it, it's just the way the recording is set up right i need to capture it when i record i need to record a specific window otherwise lsfg does not work and uh, it's just because of the way the way it works it works differently and that's also why overlays don't really work with it all right so not really concerned about the frame rate here i, I will we'll talk about the frame rate now but the reason why i say this is a good video is or, or a good uh, game is this game's DLSS really looks terrible. It looks it looks very, very bad when you enable it. Even on quality mode at 4K, it, it just does not look on par. So what I do in this game is I set the rendering mode to progressive and then I adjust the image quality. So typically it's around there. Okay, so I increase it by what's it in plus 50% give or take. And uh it does impact the performance, but it does give you much, much better visuals, right? So just progressive and image quality set to uh, above normal okay and then if we go back into our game yeah let's just uh, save the changes not that we made any game looks plenty good it runs okay ish but it uh, it's a far cry from my 165 hertz panel right so enter lossless scaling so we're going to be doing the exact same thing as previously i'm going to lock it to 78 frames per second i I hope we can maintain 78 frames per second. And then we're going to use the X2 mode, right? So just scale or just unscale and scale again. All right. So here we are. At, when, we're not really going to maintain 78 frames per second. You can see it drops to 74 in the top left hand corner. And uh, that's because the game is CPU bound. This is not uh, the GPU that's lacking. So even uh, reducing the render resolution in lsfg is not going to make a difference and the stuttering is also because of the game right but you can see here we are we're definitely getting a much better motion fluidity a much bit better visual experience here and input latency is perfectly fine for a game like this and artifacting i don't think you'll notice a lot of artifacting either all right so we're not able to maintain 78 frames per second and let's just uh, sheath it there so what i'm going to be doing is just adjust this to 60 frames per second so our final frame rate output becomes 120 frames per second right so once again we'll just have to oh no that goes it, it actually updated so 60 frames per second becoming 120 frames per second input latency slightly higher but visual quality visual fidelity is pretty good because we do have a uh, game set to render internally at a higher resolution. The same can be done with DLSS, uh, with the uh, DLDSR, sorry. But uh, the game gives you that, that option, so we can might, we might as well just use that. And then if we run outside, yeah, as I said, we're not always able to maintain a full 60 frames per second, but it gets close enough to maintain or to get close to maintaining 120 frames per second. All right, so then if we then want to do a x3 scaling which i think is maybe better in this game because some pieces will definitely struggle to maintain 60 frames per second but 50 frames per second might be better for them right so if we change the scaling to times three yeah and we lock the frame rate to 52 so this would mean 156 frames per second output mode and uh, let me just uh, unscale and scale and 52 frames per second i think is definitely more manageable more doable for quite a few systems i'd say and then times three to get 150 plus frames per second uh, motion fluidity is very smooth artifacting is still quite minimal you'll start to notice it when you start pixel peeping but personally it doesn't bother me that much the game is looking much cleaner than it does with the ls frame generation because what i didn't show you sorry is that 
for DLSS frame generation to work in this game, you have to enable DLSS. And DLSS really looks terrible in this game. I, I, I'm not even exaggerating. It, it looks pretty bad. So you can't use the LSS frame generation in this game. So that's why I think this game is a perfect candidate for tech like this. All right. I just wanted to clear the air here. Just do a proper video to show you how to actually use it. Uh, seeing that people got really mad at me just um, playing around. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter. The, the dev was very nice about it. Just gave me some pointers. Didn't think that I was doing something wrong. Uh, it's just uh, maybe just give a little bit more people a little bit more info regarding this. And I do think it is definitely serviceable. And if you if you don't mind slight artifacting here and there and slight input latency, just give it a shot. It is on Steam. I think it's about five to seven dollars. It's definitely a pretty decent piece of software to to maybe extend the life of your current GPU. All right, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.